run behind from my poster club meeting. Now I'll probably have to sit at the wobbly table. Hello. Well, substitute teacher of the year, Peggy Hill. Uh-huh, go on. The high school? Teaching? Me? Wait, who is this really? Really? <sighs> Today? Yes, of course. Oh, no, no, thank you. Guess who is subbing for high school geometry teacher Tammy Charbonneau while she takes an eight-week doctor-ordered bed rest maternity leave? Me, Peggy Hill. That was going to be my guess exactly. This is the major leagues, Hank. The bigs. The show. Oh, my God. Eight weeks, do you know what this means? It means that I have a pretty good chance of actually learning their names. Everything's happening so fast. career with such interest. 17 years teaching high school Espanol, you have never once gotten sick, or if you have gotten sick, you have never called in sick. Either way, I am subbing geometry. Well, bienvenue, how say Arlen, huh? My, what lovely spectacles. The better to see promising new talent with. <laughs> <laughs> Younger. 
Well, first, he is your age. And second, David is considered a special case. They call him unteachable. Well, he can't be good at everything. Well, you'd be surprised, Bobby. He plays offense, defense, and returns punts. Well, it looks like Luann isn't the only one with the crush on David. But you know what? He's just another student to me. No different from the nerds or the suck-ups. And I have decided to give that boy the high school education he deserves. So, it may only be a theory, but it will in fact be on next week's midterm. You get it? Oh, oh wait, David. Honey, can you spare a moment? I wanted to talk to you about your classwork. I have noticed that you have a zero grade. You have no homework points and no participation points. Uh-huh. I would like to tutor you after class. I have football practice after class. Oh. How about geometry practice after that? With a playbook by Coach Peggy Hill. Um, okay. Oh, and David? I'm glad we got to wrap. Absorb this loss. And it wasn't a cop 
conference game and we'll probably squeak by next week cause Billy's still reeling from the drug bust and then it's McManerberry and there's not a single addict on that mother loving team <laughs> Digby there's got to be something in those law books of yours look under loophole what if we got him a work study like I had at the print shop my junior year yeah David drops Mrs. Hill's class, takes a work study at Terrell's print shop. Hey, look, I, I got Billy breathing down my neck as it is. I don't need another punk in there making me look bad. I volunteer strictly propane to jump through this little loophole. Now, David can work for me till the swallows get back from campus Remy. Hey, can you slap together a makeup midterm? I'll do it quickly, but it won't be slapped together. <laughs> And the vaporization rate of a 100-pound propane cylinder at 70 degrees Fahrenheit is how many BTUs per hour? Can I have a chair? Propane 101? Yeah, it's a work-study thing approved by the Board of Education. So you and your waffle boys did an end run around Peggy Hill. Peggy, years from now, no one will remember what a hexagon is. But you win state, and, well, that goes up on the water tower. Uh-huh. And how is David doing? Oh, David's doing great. <sighs> he knows more about propane than any Hawaiian I've ever met. He does? Oh, what was I thinking? I am in over my head. What made me think that I could teach high school? I so wanted to be like Welcome Back Carter. Now, I'm like the real Gabe Kaplan. I am a loser. Okay, the test is going to be one essay question. Open serviceman's manual. Just tell me what you love most about propane. three weeks ago in the, the game. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, Strickland Propene does not have a vending machine. It smells, and I thank God every day I get home that I didn't get exploded. The end. Hill, I am speechless. 
I literally have nothing to say. Not one word. Nada. Zilch. Zero. I don't know what you're waiting for. Get this beautiful human being some waffles. David Kalaiki Ali'i received an A on his propane exam. But he deserved an F. Now, my wife Peggy... Now, now, hold on, hold on. Sure, a week ago I would have been booing my wife right along with you guys. You were, Hank! Uh, yeah. But what I realized is that she was right all along. It's time to ground the flying Hawaiian. I'm giving him an F. Hello, too late. I already turned in the sign off sheet and the grade. David is in. Sir, did you read that essay? Yeah, well, it's a classic. I thank God every day I didn't get exploded. Yes, Excuse me, but I cannot let you ruin that boy's life. I think that there might be people who would be interested in the fact that David is being deprived of an education, such as his mother, and the school board, and the secretary of education. Whoa, 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 right there. I mean, wait a minute. Look, look. We don't want to go dragging the boy's mother into this. I'm sure we can work something out. <laughs> uh. Hmm? You may keep your creamy bribe. We are going to his mother. And we are going to tell on you. The Booster Club is cheating David out of an education. And what is worse, David is cheating himself. I'd like to show you something. David is learning disabled. He studies every day as soon as he gets home from practice until he falls asleep every night. I usually come in and find him slumped over his desk using that playbook you made him as a pillow. He's a good boy. He just has trouble retaining anything. He deserves an A for effort, though. No wonder even I couldn't teach him. Sports is all God gave David, and it's the only way he'll get to college. Well, then, uh, we're sorry to have disturbed you, Mrs. Kalaiki Ali. And the Oscar goes to me! <laughs> Come on out, fellas! Hey! We smoked them good, bought it hook, line, and sinker! Thanks to you, Miss K.A. Hey, wh what's all this crap? Where's all my swanks? We kept you in the game, stud. Hey, hey! What's going on? I know all my ABCs. What the hell's we're gonna turn you in for flunking? We told them you were a slowpoke. I'm not stupid. I can't believe you did this. It's so, so stupid. David, stupid is going to get you to college. I'll tell you what's stupid. Me giving you that trans -am if you ain't gonna drive us to state. Hey, Miss Phil. No, no, David. The pep rally is down the hallway, honey. Wait, did you poop yourself? I deserve that. I guess if I'd worked harder, you guys wouldn't be so willing to believe I was learning disabled. You're not? But, but that explained everything. It was all a sham. My mom and the booster club cooked it up. Wait, sham, that's the right word, right? Yes, but I would have said scheme. It conveys more sneakiness. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about this uh, no pass, no play stuff. If I don't pass, then I should no play. Really? I probably should have something to fall back on anyway. I mean, the odds of me not making pro are what, 50-50? So what do you say teach me geometry before the game? I am so proud of you, David. But I could not even teach Albert Einstein all of geometry in an afternoon. Even if it meant that Einstein's team could go to state. Wait, wait. Maybe there is something you can learn in an afternoon. 
So you see, propane is a liquid, but it comes out as a gas. What you need, David, is a way of associating the lesson with something that's familiar to you. For instance, okay, Gatorade is a liquid, but when you dump it on the coach, it's a gas. Get it? I get that. Right. Yeah, but that's not right. And if you want to remember the chemical formula for propane, C3H8, maybe you could remember it like an audible. Say, three, H, eight, propane, propane, propane. You guys need a ride? I'm gonna be smoking on that field, but not near a propane tank, because propane is flammable. <laughs> such a wonderful hostess last year. I, uh... What? I can help, Mom. I'll be the hostess with the mostess. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Mary and Margaret. What, what's the name of that girl who dumped you, Bobby? Marie. Marie. Yeah, she was cute. Maybe we could talk about something else, huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Remember Bob Cecil, Peggy? You went to a basketball game together? You liked him. Well, that was 10th grade. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did, but he didn't like you. Uh, shouldn't you be doing this? He likes serving. Oh, after last night, it is a miracle I have my appetite back at all. I just don't see why Bill must ruin all of our dinners. Personally, I could live without him. Me too. Peggy, a little more than 20 years ago, I set Arlen High's single-season rushing record. Sure, I had legs like a jackrabbit, but Bill Dotrieve blocked for me. And the running back who forgets his front line, that's the man I wouldn't want to have to dinner. Shame on you. Shame on you both. Here you go, darling. Come on. Come on. Eat up. So, uh, were they all out of dogs there, Bill? No, no. Iguanas are very trendy these days. You see them in uh, cigar bars with movie stars. Come on. Come on, Lenore. You named it Lenore? Well, yeah. I, I thought it looked like Lenore. I think he's just not very hungry right now. I mean, with so many new people. Huh. Oh, 
Should I leave? Thank you. Don't worry. It's staying. <gasps> I cannot eat another meal with Bill at our dinner table. Why? Bill seemed a lot happier tonight. Honey, that Ajuana is a cry for help. A hissing, disease-ridden cry for help. Luann, knock! I had a bad dream. <gasps> Bill? I dreamt that Lenore came back and stole Lenore. And then Lenore drove off with Lenore, and I ran down the street after him, and I yelled, Lenore! Lenore! And then my teeth fell out. Peggy, you were there. Can I sleep in your living room? <sighs> yes, Bill. I'm giving you 24 hours to get me out of that man's dreams. Shall we? Uh, no. You need a minute? Uh, Bill, I want to have dinner tonight, just the family. You don't want me coming to dinner? Why don't you just take the night to practice being happy, okay? Yeah, okay, that's fine, no problem. I, I like eating alone, I, I prefer it, even. No offense to your family. Oh, it is just so wonderful. The food even smells better. <laughs> and then the Clint Eastwood character would say, That propane tank is empty. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a good movie? Good. That would be a great movie. And would you direct it, Uncle Hank? Yeah, me, maybe, or your Aunt Peggy. My ten-footer's gone. Dale? Or Bill? Probably Dale? What you doing there, Bill? Satellite dish trouble? Nah, I'm just up here to kill myself. What? <laughs> oh, no! You know who I feel sorriest for in all this? Bill. We need to find him a psychiatrist. He's just suicidal, Peggy. He's not crazy. We've just got to watch him constantly until he snaps out of it. I don't think Bill is going to snap out of it. There's nothing we can do but sit back and watch the blood bath. No, he's our friend. Now, Dale, you make your own hours, so you take the day shift. I'll take nights. Boom hour, late afternoon to early evening. Could I have another codeine, please? Quiet, Bill. We're trying to do something here. So, uh... Huh. Shouldn't be here. So, uh, maybe you ought to get to bed and try to sleep this thing off. All I do is sleep. I guess I'm just getting in practice, huh? For the big, long sleep. Oh. Come on, Bill. How about a beer? Beer is a depressant, Hank. Don't go blaming the beer. <sighs> it's electric, Bill. Yeah, well, it's still getting pretty hot. <sighs> <sighs> All right, we'll do this the hard way. Where do you keep your pajamas? <laughs> okay, you want baseball players or the... Hey, what's this fancy one? I like the way silk feels on my skin. Silk is for pantyhose, Bill. They're all I got. You've got a wife! Put them on. No, I don't want to. <sighs> Arms up. Rinse.
but I have to tinkle. Not on my watch. Oh, Lord, I used to come here and watch people dance like that. I can't keep this up. It's not in my nature to care about others. Yeah, man, on a little routine, man. All the time, man, no free time, man. I'm work, bill, work, bill, work, bill. Man, I'm letting a bullet in my own head, man. <sighs> okay, I'll take over your guys' shifts. I just gotta work it out with my boss. Dale, what are you wearing? Nothing. That's Bill's pajama top. He's as good as dead. What's the difference? Sir, you know how I hate missing work during the holidays, but I got a Christmas party, right? Yeah. You need some time to set up. Well, get it right. You invited our whole dang client sheet. Uh, no. Actually, it concerns a friend of mine, and, well, it's a matter of life or death, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, wrap it up one way or the other. And, uh, have Donna zero out your vacation days. Dang it, Bill. <sighs> I haven't slept in two days. This morning, Bill tried to drown himself in the toilet. So do you think you could find him a date? Uh, I, I would have to invite a woman over for dinner and, of course, never tell her that Bill would be here. Thanks, Peggy. They won't let me have a knife. I'm in the middle of killing myself. Do you like iguanas, Mrs. Tobis? You lied to me, Peggy. Mr. Dotreep is a collector of exotic reptilia. You collect throat pillows. I have some pillows on my couch, but that doesn't make me insane. And in answer to your question, I find iguanas to be filthy, repulsive creatures. Well, I think we all could use a bath. <sighs> well, when it's your own. You are a gross man. Sheila. Marry me. Bill. Oh, this is so exciting. I just want my coat. For the love of God, get me my coat. Allow me. <gasps> Don't leave me. No. Sheila, I should tell you right now, I have already given him your number. to have it. He's still alive. Nitpicking ain't gonna bring him back. <laughs> help me. Help me. Help me look for Lenore. Man, can't you see that this whole Lenore thing is your problem? The iguana, these presents, this old tree. Get rid of this stuff. No. No, I couldn't. I could see when when she comes back. She's never coming back. It's so obvious. She doesn't want this stupid stocking. No. Or whatever's in this box. No. Or this. Or this. No. There. <sighs> you feel okay? I don't feel anything. Great, I knew you'd snap out of this. Uh, sure you're okay? Yes. Good. <laughs> now I can tell you, <laughs> you were acting pretty weird there. <laughs> yes. Okay then, I'll see you tomorrow. I was really hard on him, but it was all for the best. Can you imagine if he'd shown up at our party with Lenore? Well, are you sure he's okay? I asked him twice. Oh, there's that lizard. Hey, hey, who are you? What are you doing in Bill's backyard? Hank, don't 
You recognize me? Uh, I'm Lenore. What is going on? Well, I'm just washing a dress for your big party, silly. Bill, take off the dress. Why do you keep calling me Bill? My name is Lenore, silly. I've come back because I love Bill so much, and I really missed him. No, uh-uh, this is too much. In high school, you blocked for me, but I did my job, too. I ran through the hole, setting Arlen High's single-season rushing record, as you recall. And now here I am blocking for you, but you're not even trying. I don't even know what kind of game you're playing. Maybe some kind of crazy tennis. Hey! Okay, then. Nice visiting with you. See you at the party. No. No, you stay away from my party. No party. You got that? I'm already invited to there. Oh, hello. <clears throat> Do you gentlemen think you could spare a beer for a lady? Come on. You know your bill. No, no. I don't know that. I'm not... I'm, I'm Lenore. Well, if you're Lenore, mm -hmm. then where's Bill? Huh? Uh, Bill's in the house. Mm -hmm. You want me to go get him? I'm skeptical that you could, yet intrigued that you may. Bill's been acting a little weird lately, don't you think? Maybe it's me. Uh, Bill's busy. <clears throat> I needed a wrap. It's chilly. Yep. All right, that's it. Honey, you're peeling in anger. You should be able to get more than one French fry out of a whole Idaho. Yeah, maybe I am angry. I used my vacation days bathing the son of a bitch, and he threatens to crash my Christmas party. He's not being an ingrate on purpose. The only way that Bill could get Lenore back was to become her. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some psychological basis to it. Well, I don't know anything about psychology, but it sounds to me like Mr. Dotrieve needs closure. He needs to realize that Lenore's never coming back, and he needs to just move on with his life. It's the same thing Buckley's Angel told me. Well, Buckley's Angel's the only one making sense. <gasps> How about I invite the real Lenore to the party and just settle this thing once and for all? Oh, I hope it works, but if they show up in the same dress, it'll be a disaster. Listen, Hank, we got all our clients here. Big fish, little fish, so if you see some little fish cornering me, it's your job to pull me out. We should treat all our clients like big fish, Mr. Strickland. Yeah, good, good. Save that for the little fish. Damn it. May I offer you a homemade tater tot, Mr. and Mrs. Dotree? Well, thanks. What the hell's going on here, Hank? I ordered a Santa. This is some kind of mistake. Bill, get out. Lenore! Bill! I want to stay and mingle. Lenore, who is me, sure does love a party. Party, party! Phone call for you, Mom. Hello? Lenore? Yeah, hold on. Bill, it's the real Lenore. <clears throat> what? Oh, honey, but you have to come by. Oh, okay. How about I hand Bill the phone? It would really help. It... Well, if you could just tell him you sent your love. It... Yeah, sure. No, I understand. Never mind, Bill. <clears throat> Is this a joke? Because if it is, I don't think it's a freak. I tell you what, man, I'm getting ugly in here, man. Those people that come in, they're going to get Bill no dress, man. They're going to get that one ass whooping on him. Go back to Hollywood. This is the Democratic National Convention. You crashed the wrong party, honey. Hey, this is Jack. Look at this. Yeah, now we're having fun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's that kind of party. <laughs> Anything goes. Extra fun. Woo! Hank, this wasn't on my invitation. D did you make Bill a special invitation? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! <gasps> well, okie dokie. Everyone, 
Let's play Boggle, huh? It's not usually played with such a large group, but it's Christmas, so... <laughs> Let's sing a song. <laughs> Stop teasing me! Bill, I am Lenore, and I don't love you. No, Hank! I'm Lenore! I've left you forever because you're lazy and no good. We fight so loud, all the neighbors can hear. We fight during the day, we fight during the night. Lenore, wait, wait, we can work stuff out. I'm a good husband. Bill, if I wanted to work things out, I would have called. I don't love you anymore. That's it. I don't love you. That's all? <laughs> That's why you left? It simple as that? You didn't even... The courtesy to send me a dear John letter? Well, I'll tell you what I consider that rude. And I'll tell you something I am worth a dear John letter. I'll tell you that right now. And there are a lot of women who would agree with me. So you know what? You go ahead. You get out. Get out. You don't you don't deserve William Fontaine de Liturgo dream. Okay, Bill. That's what I'm doing then. I hit rock bottom there, didn't I, Hank? And hard. Then it's, it's all uphill from now on. Yep. The wind's at your back, buddy. Merry Christmas. Get... So, <laughs> meeting a woman on the internet. How do you like that? Now, I'll take care of everything while you're away. I even made a tape of all your plant's favorite songs. Oh, Bill, Peggy and I were thinking Bobby could take care of Boomhauer's house while he's gone. I see. Bobby's a good kid, but, uh, you looked at his room lately? So what do you say? It'll be good for the boy. Teach him some responsibility. Man, man, whatever, you know, they like, like to do, man. You know, one of them bonsai, and then we'll feed the koi. Just think, Bill, this'll free you up for new challenges. <laughs> Like what? So if we could have the keys... Oops. Here. Hey, you know I'm not really here for a free haircut. I'm here because I like to check up on what's happening. What's going on? What's now? I gotta tell you, baby doll, you are very now. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The name is Rad Thibodeox. Here's my card, you know, so you know I'm for real. Radical concepts. <laughs> that sounds exciting. Well, only if you think the fast-paced celebrity field life of a concert promoter is exciting. <laughs> oh, and your name is Rad? <laughs> How clever. <laughs> you know, I've noticed that uh, we've been talking a lot about Rad, not too much about Miss Sweet Lou Anne. Uh. Me too. But tell me something. You gotta love her. You know, I don't even have a boyfriend. My last one, Buckley, blew up in a propane explosion. You know, I can tell you're a very sensitive young woman, and, and sensitive people, they do have a hard time in our society today. I mean, I should know. As a self-proclaimed genius, I myself rad Thibodeox. I'm often misunderstood. Self-proclaimed genius? Yes. You poor thing. Oh, what do you think? Damn, that's a fine job, baby. That's such a fine job. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask you out. <laughs> you don't know it yet, but you're going to say yes. He's right. I'm trusting you with Boomhauer's keys, Bobby. Now, remember, it doesn't just unlock the front door. It unlocks a new phase in your life as a responsible adult. Why is Mr. Doetree looking at us like that? He's proud of you too, Bobby.
Pick up. Boomhauer, pick up. Pick up, Boomhauer. Pick. All right, your way. Hey, good looking. Hey, Bobby. This is my new friend, Rad. That's what his license plate says. Well, you see, in the industry, a man is only as good as his word, so keep it. You know, nobody's gonna know that you are a man who keeps his word. You break it. Oh, God. Man, I'm telling you, the freebies, they drive like a puddle in the sun. Whoa. Brad, what do you mean by the industry? The entertainment industry. Whoa! <laughs> there you go. Sometimes, by mistake. But no damage done. Now, Lou Ann has told me about you, so I know you're gonna love these free CDs. AOL? Mm-hmm. And guess what? Will you sign up right now? I get ten free hours. All you gotta do is tell them it's so rad at AOL.com. I sent you. <laughs> hey, Mom. Dad. Got it going on? I got... What? Doing what? Bobby, what have you done to your sleeves? Well, this is how Rad sleeves himself. It's industry. You know, I don't much care for that Rad fella. Rad Thibodeix is a self-proclaimed genius. Everyone leave. Oh, now, Luann, you don't want to make. 
make me and Mr. Boomhauser look like bad hosts, do you? That's it, Brad Zipodayx. I am not your girlfriend anymore. Wait a minute now. I, I never proclaimed you to be my girlfriend, baby doll. Decision, you gotta live with it. <laughs> Look at this place. Twelve years old and drinking a beer? I didn't even like it. Well, now you're just trying to get me mad. Your father and I are replacing you as Boom Howard's house sitter, and we'll be keeping the one dollar a day for ourselves. That's right, and I'm taking away your suitcase of props. Fine, I could do my comedy without props. So. You ever notice how? How? You can't take away my props! <laughs> because of you, I'm propless. Hey, you can't throw those out. This CD is all I've got left of Red. He didn't give it to you, Bobby. He gave it to me. <laughs> you were never even part of his inner circle. You! We're just a hanger on. Take that back. Like AJ. State your purpose. Mr. Gribble, I'm having a problem with Luann. Do you know anything about getting even with people who have done something bad to you? Uh, no, Bobby. Nothing at all. a handful. wrong. 
I don't want to be right. Couldn't help hearing the bubbles. Mind if I join? <gasps> oh, dear Lord. Get the hell out of here, Dale. No! No! Oh, no! Is anything the matter, Louie? My birth control pills have stopped working. Oh! <gasps> I should have known when they started tasting sweet. Like candy? <laughs> this isn't funny, Bobby. Oh, I disagree. You don't understand. Every woman has to take a birth control pill every day or else they get pregnant. Just take two now. Hurry. That would destroy my insides. That's how it works. Take them. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way to teach Dale the meaning of no. Mom, Dad, I've gotten Luann pregnant. Luann, I thought you were smarter than this. I did. Can you imagine the consequences if you had taken one of those fake pills and gone out and had unprotected... Uh, I only got the pill to clear up my complexion and regulate my... Uh, Bobby's the one who messed with my medicine. You messed with his fruit pies. After that, he had nothing to lose. I'll go tell him the truth right away. No, not so fast. Bobby has to learn that what he did was completely unacceptable. Now, as far as he knows, you are still expecting. You want me to lie? Well, deceiving somebody is never good. But in order to teach Bobby the meaning of responsibility... I'll do it! So, how's it going there, sport? Not so good. Pretty big screw-up, huh? I feel bad about it, Dad. Well, heck, we all make mistakes. The point is, you can make up for them. Really? How? By doing the right thing, of course. You're gonna have to marry Lou Ann. But I'm only 12 years old. Well, just think, you could be married for 80 years. Dad, you can't make me marry Lou Ann. Yes, I can, Bobby. You're only 12 years old. It's a little late for that. You didn't take care of Boomhauer's, you drank beer, you messed with Luann's lady pills. I ask you, is that responsible behavior? <sighs> no. Well, then having to marry Luann will be a good lesson for you. Luann, I know we've had our differences, but I was kind of hoping we could make up and not get married. Uncle Hank! Bobby's trying to get out of marrying! Bobby, you cut that out. Well, you barely touched that Sunday, Bobby. I'm not really hungry. Come on, what kind of bachelor party is this? Better live it up all you can before the wife is after you to watch the waistline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, this is the last free night of your life. To Mr. and Mrs. Bobby Hill, May their marriage be every bit as wonderful as mine is. And as mine was. <sighs> Bobby, I've got to do my homework. Homework? <laughs> you go on and do your homework. Just let me watch you for a little while. I brought this for you. Mom, Mom, I don't want to do this. Well, of course you don't. <laughs> Come, my child.
Bobby, do you take Luann to be your lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish till death do you part? <laughs> that sounds like a yes to me. All right. Luann, do you take Bobby to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> that Bill is actually a licensed minister. You mean, I'm really married to Bobby? Legally? Yes. <laughs> then I'll just get a divorce. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll say he hit me. I guess you could do that, but the law is you have to wait a year. That's to give you time to patch things up. <gasps> no! <laughs> <laughs> Please, Luann, I don't think I'm ready for this yet. Look, we're going to have to deal with this being married thing, so the sooner we make the rules, the better. I get to date as much as I want with whoever I want. You can see Connie if you want to, but just not in public. Mm, nah, I changed my mind. You can't see Connie ever. Look at the happy newlyweds. <laughs> How come they get to be married when I never do? Why do they get to be so happy? It's not fair. It's not fair. It's, it's a fake. It's, it's all a fake. I'm not a minister. Bill used to still play the piano. It's all a great... It's a great big fake is what it is. <sighs> uh, that sure was some good parenting. I don't think the experts would disagree. Mr. Dark Chase says Bobby and I aren't really married. I'm still keeping those placemats he gave us. Placemats? That's it? Well, he's one of your best friends. You want some milk with that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad we're not married anymore. But you know what? I could do a whole lot worse. I'm sorry for the pranks, Luann. And you probably shouldn't open your laundry hamper very quickly, unless you like snakes. Thank you. Oh, you might not want to ride downhill on your bike. Something might be wrong with the brake cable. Oh, don't use your mouthwash around an open flame, all right? I'll try not to. Oh, uh, you might want to stop drinking that milk. <clears throat> Start it, Dale. There were no engine noises. I'll try to start it. Can I borrow some gas? Don't waste my gas. We both know it's not going to start. Then why must you torture me like this? <sighs> now that's where I want the tank when it comes back. With gas, not water this time. That was Aqua Hall. Dale! So I tapped him on the shoulder and said with a straight face, maybe you want to put a little lacquer in that varnish. <laughs> uh, long story short, he put some lacquer in it. Wait a minute, I know that engine. Damn it, Dale! Hank, I'm only halfway done. You can't go out looking like that. <gasps> Hey, I'm gonna borrow your drill. Where's my mower? Oh, so you want to know where your mower is? Yes. It ran out of gas down past the gas station. I'll help you pick it up tomorrow. You're not touching my mower ever again. 
You left it out in the street where any weirdo could just rub up against it. Hank, what would weirdos be doing near the gas station? What would weirdos be doing near the gas station? Oh my god. What does it say? Nothing. Uh, Hank, you know I didn't finish mowing my lawn. Don't even ask if you can borrow my mower, Dale. Like I would borrow that piece of junk. Boom hour. Can I borrow your mower? I tell you what, man, I'm gonna loan you my monopoly set, man. Come back and I'm gonna bang on top of that gun with a little bar boardwalk on mustard stains on the park place too, man. I'm gonna bang on mom coming over and want to end up playing Stratego, man. Bill, can I borrow your mower? Okay. Like I would borrow that piece of junk. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? Your fly is down. It's my yard. Yep, yep. Mm. Dale probably doesn't want to show his face, his lawn being so shaggy and all. He's feeling like less than a man. Castrated, you know. I've been there. Well, don't feel sorry for Dale. Dale abused our trust. <sighs> Oh, my God. Can it be? It, is that? No, it's Dale on a new mower. Say hello to the Allegro X9J, codenamed Redeemer at the Mason Mower Skunk Works inside Mount Hood. 73 decibels of twin barrel four-stroke war cry. All at a price I can't really afford. <laughs> He's a beauty, Dale. Did you get a good trade-in on your old one? That thing, I pushed it into a lake three months ago. You look so manly sitting up there. Can I take her for a spin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would violate the warranty, Bill. No, oh, come on, Dale. You use that more and everything. And I... Yeah. That is a watertight seal. I can mow my lawn in a hurricane. Can you mow your lawn in a hurricane, Bill? I don't know. You can't mow your lawn in a hurricane. Can you, Boom Hour? I tell you what, man. I'm telling you, that pause track going on, man. A little choke call, man. Start doing that. Bullcorn. Oh, almost forgot. Hank, can you mow your lawn in a hurricane? Nope, didn't think so. Ha, 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 ha. How do I know it's Jack Ruby's hat? Well, if I'm gonna spend money on it, I gotta know it's Jack Ruby's hat. All right, what colors does it come in? <laughs> Next time it might not be a BB. I know what you're here for. Deal. Uh, this isn't how I wanted you to find out. Quit screwing around with my mower. You've got to be kidding. I don't kid about my mower. Now get inside and start massaging my wife. He's taking some of the fun out of this. If Dale watered down the gas again... Hmm. No. This soda pop, Hank. That's just grease. Race you around the block. You wrecked my mower with your damn soda. It's Mr. Pibb. I heard Bobby say he did it. Said he had a score to settle with you. Something about a woman. I think something bad is about to happen to that mower. No, oh, I doubt that, Hank. It's a brand new mower. Oh, I get it. All right, I'll tell you. Thank you, Hank. Good one. You ride a mason. Vroom, vroom. Nothing else cuts it. You gonna talk? Or are you gonna mow?
mower's gone. Somebody stole my mower. Tell me you saw something. You're the neighborhood snoop. Well, I did find these lying around. <laughs> Look at the date on that paper. That's tomorrow's newspaper. Who would have access to a paper from the future, you might ask? The paper boy. That's today's paper, Dale. The date on my watch has been set incorrectly. When did the paper boy have access to my watch? Ah, uh, it's probably halfway to Mexico. That is a Mexican dog. Oh, you think that dog did it? That dog is up to no good. Hang in there, Dale. Even if you never get to see your mower again, you'll still have the brochure. Thanks. You know, you guys are my best friends. <laughs> the joke's always been on me. <laughs> All my life, folks are always playing jokes on me. And no wonder. It's fun. <laughs> Some kind of elaborate joke on me, is it? <laughs> I found this on our doorstep. D that's my oil filter. Shug, I'm not a licensed bounty hunter, but shouldn't they either ask for ransom or stop sending you clues? Why would someone senselessly torture me? Unless they were my enemies. Boil up some Mountain Dew. It's gonna be a long night. tells me we have a new vehicle in the garage. Maybe you would like to explain to your son why you stole your best friend's mower? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, you see, Bobby, uh, this isn't stealing. We were going to give it back after we made Mr. Gribble. Uh, sometimes things that are jokes seem a little mean, but they're actually funny. Oh, I see. Kind of like when they fed the fourth grade gerbil to the fifth grade snake. No, Bobby, this is fun. It's not mean or dishonest. But don't tell Joseph, okay? Bobby, I need to go play outside. Your father and I have something to discuss. All right, we can use Photoshop and make it look like Lee Harvey Oswald's riding on his mower. Have you been sleeping, Dale? You got kind of that county fair smell. Check it out. It's finally making sense. Oswald, mower, grassy, no, eh. That photo doesn't even look real, Dale. <laughs> well, I'd like to live in your fairy tale world, Hank, but the fair play for Cuba committee is retrofitting my mower's engine to power Fidel Castro's one-man escape sub. Huh. Dale, why don't you relax? Have a beer. No beer? Gotta stay sharp. He's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, I tell you what, man, I got a dang old Margo Kidder, man. I don't want to wander around in a dang old car little cardboard box, man. <laughs> weep, weep. <laughs> yeah, but I think we ought to give the mower back. We're putting extra stress on a structure that wasn't up to code in the first place. Let's tell him it was us. Well, that's easy for you to say. It's not your naked butt in that picture. <sighs> you took the money. Still.
this is where all the preparation pays off. <laughs> the binging, the purging, the constant inoculations. It's me. They know I'm getting close. Chuck, you've got to get up early to kill the termite larva at the college. You're not gonna stay down here all night, are you? Time has no meaning for me. What is it, 1 a.m., 3 a.m.? It's 6. A.m.? No. Oh. Is dinner ready? All right, I'm just gonna have Jane Fonda observing the autopsy. What do you think, is that too much? The boy at Kinko said it was too much. Well, when he gets home, tell him it was all a joke and the mower was comfortably lubricated at all times. Okay. I don't know why you'd want to fool Dale like that. I mean, it's not hard if you're somebody he trusts. But hey, whatever turns you on, that's what I always say. You're gonna have to speak clear. All right, listen, whatever it is that you're eating, Bill, take it out. Out! Out! Take it out! Okay. That's better, thank you. Uh-huh. I think it's Bill. He says Dale's gone crazy. Huh? I, I, I was at Junior College playing some pinball with the boys, and Dale's up in the tower. He's up there with a gun. I'll be right there. Don't call the police unless Dale starts shooting. Okay. I already called the police. What the? Clear the area. Go, go, go. Get some sharpshooters on the roof across the street now. Is he still up in the tower? Who, the sniper? He's not a sniper. He's my friend. Dale wouldn't shoot anybody. But he is president of the gun club. Yes, he is president. But only because he owns the most guns. Yep, it's all a big joke, isn't it? Until someone gets hurt. Mr. Cripple, you have the tower surrounded. Put down your gun. <laughs> It's just a wand! That's right, Dale! Show moves, boss! The police aren't trained for this. Let's go, gun club. But Dale's our president. I didn't vote for him. Shackleford. Give him what he wants. I can't see the hostage. There is no hostage. Rusty Shackleford is the fake name he orders pizza with. Look, here's his mower. This way, sir. Just tell him you've got his mower and that it's safe. We have your mower. I know that, Fidel Lito. Hank, I was right. These Cubans have my mower. Watch out. Please, this is my fault. Dale, come down here before somebody gets hurt. Too late. I killed Shackleford. <gasps> no, no, correction. Shackleford wants a pizza. What the hell's going on up there? And I want my mower back with enough gas to get to Canada. What does the book say? I don't know. Uh, maybe tear gas. Apology. I want the CIA to sell off its fantastic hairstyle and stuff. Fork and the spoon jumped over the moon. No. <sighs> you got a letter. <sighs> it smells like the letters Luann used to get from her mom in prison. <sighs> Only prisonier. Hmm. Archer. I don't know anyone named Archer. Hey, I've been pre-approved for a gold card. Who wants ice cream? Oh, listen to this. It's from an old student of mine. He's on death row. And as I raise my hand for possibly my final question, I hope that Miss Peggy Hill will call on me one more time. 
because she is the person who has had the most positive impact on my life. Sincerely, Wesley Martin Archer. That's a good name for a killer. What was he like, Mom? Did he speak real proper English like an evil genius? I think maybe he had wavy brown hair. Or was he that albino boy? Well, he'll all come back to me when I see him. Oh, wait a second here. You're not thinking of going into a prison, are you? Hank, I am a substitute teacher. I flit in and out of people's lives, and I never know if I've made a difference. With this boy, I did make an impact. Uh, he's in prison, Peggy. Dang it, Peggy, some of these guys haven't seen a woman since they killed their wives. If you're gonna insist on going, do you have to be all decked out like some disco dancer? Hank, please. Death Row is perfectly safe. There's a code of conduct that all prisoners are obligated to obey. Tell you what, Hank, man, she's just like a dang old suit and surround in that movie, man. It was a coldy man who talking about taste waves, cool buzz, you know. Are you just gonna joke your way through your entire life, Boomhauer? Don't snap at Boomhauer just because you're losing control of your woman. Believe me, Hank, if you don't stop it here, the next step will be cutting your allowance. Oh, you can't rein Peggy in, Dale. Peggy's like a wild mare. She needs to run free, her chestnut mane blowing in the wind, flanks glistening with sweat. I'll stop now. Hey, Death Row, do you think Peggy's gonna meet the executioner? Well, she only mentioned the murderer. Executioning. For us exterminators, that's the major league. The show. Ow! Applicator just keep the man's eye right out of his head. Hola, senora. You don't remember me. That's okay. Someone like you touches so many lives. Well, yes, I guess I do. Who'd you kill? I killed myself. At least I might as well have, as bad as I feel about it. One night I went with my buddy Ray over to his friend's house, only he wasn't home. So I gave Ray a boost up to the window. He couldn't climb up and hold his gun at the same time. Well, that's why we were there, to return his friend's gun. Mm-hmm. I can see where this is going. Go on. So we get inside, and it turns out the guy was home. He was screaming, alarms were ringing, and when a guy yells, don't shoot, Believe me, it has the opposite effect. I just panicked, and next thing I know, I, his head was blown off. Well, it would be a comedy of errors if it wasn't so tragic. Well, you don't miss a thing, do you? How do you say Peggy Hill is the smartest, most talented woman on Earth? In Spanish. Well, hmm. That would be Peggy Hill es bueno. The prison may think 10 back issues of Us Magazine and a Bible make a library, but I do not. Wesley needs more than that to expand his mind. Why bother helping him at all? He's just going to be executed. Very nice, Hank. You know, Wes had only the best things to say about you. He was very supportive about your problems with your father. You gave a convict personal information about... <sighs> How could you be that naive? Naive? Do you know what a prisoner could do with this? I do. He could jab it into your windpipe and you would be dead in two minutes. Glasses are not a weapon. Guns are a weapon. You used to know that. What color is your parachute? It is a wonderful book about finding your inner self. This is so great. Mrs. Hill, have you ever played What If? What If? Is that the one where you guys see how quickly you can stab a knife around your fingers? Well, that game's fun, but I don't think it has a name. How about Stab Scotch? Stab Scotch? Well, that's real good, Mrs. Hill. But uh, I'm back to what if. I can't help thinking, what if Mrs. Hill had been my full-time teacher? Maybe I'd be able to read these books. You can't read? Now that is a crime. Look, I know it would be unfair to ask, but 
If you would come in and tutor me, well, what's the happiest color on earth? Yellow. Well, then my parachute would be yellow. You gave that bastard our travel version of the Guinness Book of World Records, and now you're going to teach him to read it? Hank, I'm a teacher. I sell knowledge, and it doesn't matter to who. Whom? Even murderers? You work with propane, and that kills people. Only when used by people that don't know how to handle it, and I know how to handle it. And I know how to handle myself. I am not some corset-wearing lady who passes out with the vapors at the drop of a hat or a sudden garroting. <sighs> Dang it, Peggy, I... you can't just... <sighs> okay, that's it. You leave me no choice. For your own good, I am forbidding you to go back there. You forbid me? Unless you decide on your own not to go. Cause I'll still support that. Nobody forbids Peggy Hill. Ooh. Well, obviously, since there's only one of you, I cannot grade on a curve. But every day an assignment is late is one grade off and a day in the hole. <laughs> oh, Peggy. <laughs> oh, well, that's beautiful. Is that me? It's an apple. Oh. So, you're telling me you'll spray the entire prison for just one dollar a month? My word is my bond, sir. Due to the fact the state wouldn't bond me. Or insure me. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, the invoice will say two grand. Well, that's just procedure. I think we've got ourselves a deal. Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> I read your manual, and as an official employee of the prison system, I now qualify to be the executioner. <laughs> Where's old Sparky? Old Sparky's been put out to pasture. We use lethal injection. Okay, then where's old Squirty? Dead is dead. I don't care how we get there. Mr. Gribble, generally we choose one of the guards to be the executioner, and there's a rather long list of volunteers already. Put me on it, please, please, please. Well, all right, you'll be... Number 129. Wingo! I'm gonna kill a killer. I'm gonna kill a killer. Uh, Mom, you're covering up my essay on why pollution is bad. It gotta show his improvement. Sorry, Bobby, but I guess we're just gonna have to murder somebody if we want your mom's attention. Okay. Hi, Sam. Hold it. Oh, yeah. Wes, you're supposed to start finding words. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hill. I'm just not used to such creative teaching. Don't you dare touch her! You leave Mrs. Hill alone! No, stop it! She's too good no, for you! No. She's teaching me to read! Oh, good God! Excuse me, do you know if these gloves are good for killing a man? It was only three days in the pit. I thought the guard was gonna touch her bottom. Oh, I tried to tell them that you meant no harm, but they would not listen. Heck, they're all as dumb as a bucket of dirt. Anyway, that's why they hate Boggle. They hate Boggle? Only because we love Boggle. When I was little, my Meemaw played on her Boggle set all the time. I just watched being illiterate and all, but I dreamed of someday playing on that set. Peggy, if you get me my boggle set, you could make that dream come true. I am a dream weaver. <laughs> so, Jeanette, I did not realize they allowed Wesley conjugal visits. Wes better get the whole set. <laughs> Rock me on the dais! Now, Wes, you shake the letters, not the timer. <laughs> All right.
All right. Who covered Wes's drawing with this crap? Uh, Peggy, I just thought that maybe if you saw some happy pictures, you might do happy things, like not visiting death row. Let me paint you a happy picture, Hank. A broken down, illiterate man with nothing but death staring him in the face spells out the word party with his family boggle set. And then he croons a white Christmas to me as I leave his cell for the day. Now that is a happy picture, Hank. And then everybody started fighting and the guards were in there just to swing in their clubs and I, I couldn't get to the boggle set in time. It was ruined. Oh, just a timer. Jeanette will give you a new one. Wes is a little slow. He needs more time. Well, you realize that this is not a regulation timer. This will make tournament play impossible for Wes. Oh. Uh, okay. I know it was stupid, but we were playing out in the yard and the top fell off. Jeanette will give you some more timer, Sam. What about using a watch? Peggy, that's no real boggle. Well, this should certainly last him a while. You're not riding, Wes. All right, I'm going to give you one tiny hint. Oh, rats, there's tar on my star art. Wes, what is it? Ah. Uh... I can't let the guards see me cry. If they sense some weakness... Guard, could you please give us some space? You are inhibiting his wordplay. I have something to tell you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Good. Peggy, all this time are saying you've been bringing me. Oh, don't mention that. This is coke, Peggy. You've been smuggling me cocaine. That's a federal offense. And you know what? You're gonna bring me more of it. Is this some kind of a... How stupid can you be? I never had you as a teacher. I grew up in Arkansas. I'm almost 40, for Christ's sakes. I wrote every teacher in the Arlen yearbook, and you were the only sap dumb enough to answer. So, all that about being the only positive influence on you... Here's what you're gonna do. You're going to bring me a brick of cocaine every week. And that's not all. You know what else I'm gonna make you? Do -do. Sloppy Joe is all sloppy and no joke. I forgot to add the meat. How could I be so freaking stupid? Luann, Bobby, why don't you go get some money from my purse and go out for pizza? to be illegal, Peggy. Well, I thought it was Boggle Sand. And now he's making all kinds of demands. One box of pornography, a jug of corn liquor, a Farrah Fawcett poster, a Milwaukee Sawzall, and a brick of cocaine on every Tuesday. Oh, well, he certainly revealed his true colors. I don't think you'll be going back to see him again. Hank, I have to, or he will turn me in. They will send me to jail. <laughs> I guess you're happy now. So there. All right. I thought it had some... 20 biology quizzes and not one smiley face. Their grades are plummeting even faster than I did when I fell out of that airplane. Uh, Peggy, remember the therapist said to go easy on your spine. You may want to shorten your backswing on those check marks. <laughs> Hank, the best therapy for my back will be lifting my third straight substitute teacher of the year award high above my head in triumph. <sighs> Falling from that plane may have broken my spine, but it could not break my teaching bone. No, not even if one existed. Uh, Mom, I think you're using the English key to mark the bio tests. Oh, um, I guess. Oh, I am not used to teaching so much non-Spanish. Come on, Peggy Hill, rookie mistake, get it together. Uh-oh, I don't have the bio answer key. Bobby, find me a frog. Uh-huh. 
Well, I would suggest you bleed out the excess pressure in the bypass line because if you don't have... Is that a business call, Hank? Uh, not strictly, no. Hank, when was the last time you took a day off? Well, I took a day off when Bobby was born, but I wasn't really sick. I meant to tell you, it just slipped my mind. I did come in that Saturday. Would you get the hell out of here, Hank? I'm getting squeezed by some insurance company pencil stain who claims working too long without a vacation can make you sloppy. And when you're sloppy in the propane mist, people die. And then my premiums go up. Sloppy? I challenge him to find one single mistake. Oh, whoa, whoa, Hank, just take some time off. See you in two weeks. Couldn't I just take my vacation at my desk? No. Oh. Teaching man today, are you? You know, after you win Substitute of the Year this time, they might just rename it the Hill Trophy. Oh. <laughs> I can't suggest that, Hank. You'd have to suggest that. Well, I sure do have the time. This whole not working thing is gonna give me a heart attack. I tell you what, God, that'd be embarrassing. Hank Hill found dead not working. Well, I wish I could stay in Hill, but until they invent a machine that can stand in front of a band and keep the beat, I am needed. Shaves today, Bill, or just haircuts? Well, how's that new belt working out, Boomhauer? No. Dale, you kill any bugs? Did I? No. Yep, I did. It, it fell in the big jar of blue stuff where I keep my cones. Was it small, like an ant, or crafty, like a fly? I'm not sure. Fly. Ooh. I'd come by tomorrow to pick it up, but my plate's full. Situation with a termite, possibly more than one. Termites? Well, maybe you could use an extra set of hands. We ain't go, but you gotta chip in for gas and poison. Here is the beauty of tenting. Ground Zero is officially hot for a week. It takes two days to spray. The rest of the time, it's your own private playhouse. <laughs> go on, take a spin on the bidet. Or did you think it was a water fountain? <laughs> I did. I'm going home, Dale. I shouldn't even have let myself sit on a stranger's toilet lid. Man, this guy's got bad eyesight. So tell me about your day. How was, uh, math? We were doing conversions on the overhead projector, and Mrs. Hosner erased her mistakes with spit. Oh, huh. Well, what'd you do before math? That's my new favorite class. Shop. Shop? Bobby, from now on, when I ask how was your day, I mean, how was shop? Oh, it's great. Our regular teacher eloped with the lunch lady, so until the two of them get back from Branson, Principal Moss is having us use shop as a study hall. We don't have to make anything. What? Hold on, son. <sighs> Now, I want you to tell me again slowly. What happened to shop? You look so tired, Aunt Peggy. It's not a pretty look. Well, there is no rest for a substitute teacher, Luann, except for 10 minutes every hour and 45 minutes for lunch. Oh. I'm a pre-education major. Maybe I could be a substitute teacher. 
Oh, oh, Luann, honey, I was not laughing at you. I was laughing at the idea. I'm sorry, Hank. The school board will not authorize the funding for a substitute shop teacher. Heck, we can't even afford to fix a den that Jim Forward Coach had his little fit. You know, I remember a fella in my eighth grade shop class. Pretty handy with the coping saw. Nice guy. His name was Carl Moss. Whatever happened to him? Got married, had kids, responsibilities. Things change, Hank. Well, one thing hasn't changed. Kids need shop. Well, who's gonna teach them? The only man handier with the coping saw than Carl Moss. Jack Shermer. What? Jack was all flash. I coped circles around me. I'll teach shop and I'll do it for free. Okay, Hank. With your wife already a substitute teacher here, just keep the bitterness and the he said, she said out of my school. We have a very good marriage. I don't want to catch you two making out in the teacher's lounge. You won't. So, uh, should I have the students call me Mr. Hill or Hank? Oh, good Lord. And I thought I dodged a bullet when Luann wanted to teach. Are you comparing me to Luann? Ike, sit down. I'm gonna do for you what, at the beginning of my career, I did for me. Create a unified theory of education. Now, teaching can be divided into seven spectras. The salutatory, the attendatory, pedagogery. Wait, let's see, how's it go? Uh, wait, Sir Arnold the First Diamond. D, oh, disciplinaria. Which brings us to sanitaria. Uh, everybody looks pretty clean. Guess we could empty the trash. Uh, son, could you stand up a minute? Cool. Is that a switchblade? No, uh, it's a multi-tool. But it does have a saw. What else does it have? Well, it has a file. A serrated sheep's foot blade, a lanyard ring, you know, the usual. And for our purposes now, a Phillips head. Hey, do that thing again. What, this? <laughs> hey, what were you kids working on before they made this a study hall? Bird houses. Let's see them. Joseph, well, I don't see any reason your father needs to find out about this. You know, birds can build their own houses. They're called nests. But I've never seen a bird build a boomerang or a dartboard. <laughs> okay, everyone, put on your goggles. Now, remember, everybody, goggles might make you look cool, but they're also part of proper safety attire. I have this one student, kind of a troublemaker. He likes to leave his rabbit plane lying blade down. But a project like this mini foosball set might just turn him around. So, can I assume that my lesson plan got an A? Or is your highest grade an A plus? Well, actually, I was having a little trouble with the file card, so, well, I kind of winged it. <sighs> winged it? Well, you professional teachers probably have a special term for it, but I just fell back on natural instinct. It might not have been a pretty win, but I'll take it. Huh. Well, that's strange. We don't seem to have a bevel gauge. I bet you've got more tools than the school does. And I bet the cost-benefit Yahoo who decided this shop could do without a bevel gauge has never even tried to test a bevel, much less a chamfer. Yeah. The big yahoo. That's looking good, Bobby. Just remember to clamp your butt joint. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. I just... It's... No, no, it's okay. You're right. <laughs> Joke's on me. You should use a minor joint here. That will look better. Then a... Butt joint. <laughs> right. Okay, son. Now you're just rubbing it in. When we take the rose out of the liquid nitrogen, it becomes as brittle as the most delicate crystal wine gum. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. The exciting thing 
about the laws of nature is that, well, you never know what to expect. Smooth enough to hold even the finest napkin. Your mom's gonna love it. You see, this is why we do shop. Not to be more popular or to get into college, but to sand and drill and chisel things for our moms. Yeah. Well, hey there, Peggy. Welcome to my classroom. Hey, it's Mrs. Peggy Hill in front of the voters. Or two-time substitute of the year, Mrs. Hill. Yes, that sounds more natural. Didn't you hear the bell ring? In two minutes, these students will be tardy somewhere. Did anyone show you how to fill out a hall pass? No, but I made my own rubber hall pass stamp. Hey, what is going to happen when that falls into the wrong hands? Well, I guess you don't have a stamp to answer that, do you? Say, Carl, I hope you don't mind. I jotted down some basic supplies we need in shop. We don't have money for all these fancy teaching aids. Like wood. You know, the Carl Moss I knew wouldn't Give have... it a rest, Hank. All parents care about these days is zero tolerance, drug policies, and literacy. Why can't Johnny read? Why can't Johnny read? God, that gets old. But Carl's shop is the foundation of all learning. And I tell you what, a youngster with a tool in both hands has no hands left to do drugs. <laughs> Just put the tools down if they want to do the drugs bad enough. Oh, Joseph wants to use the last piece of maple for his napkin holder. I wonder if it was like this teaching shop during World War II. I don't know. You know what helped us win that war? People here at home made do with what they had. Like when Clark's chair was squeaking, we all pitched in and fixed it. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. This school is one big project waiting to be fixed. Anyone notice that broken window in the chemistry class? We could all bring some tools from home to fix that window or rehang the letters that blew off the school last winter. No one's gonna make fun of us for going to Bomb Landy Middle School. No more! <laughs> Got it. Oh, 
Okay, if the locker room's all regrouted, why don't you go to the cafeteria and work on those dimmer switches? Mr. Hill, come quick. Something's happened to Bobby. Say? Hank, you caught your boy carrying these chisels and screwdrivers and this toothy, pointy keyhole saw. They're tools. Carl, you used to know that. Well, yeah, maybe. But according to school board's zero tolerance policy, anything that can be used as a weapon is a weapon. Well, that's just asinine. Hey, my hands are tied. If I showed even a little bit of tolerance, we couldn't call it zero tolerance. I'm sorry, Hank. I'm gonna have to suspend your boy. He didn't do anything wrong. I told all my students to bring tools in. Well, that cuts down on the paperwork. I'm gonna have to suspend you. Emily! Score Mr. Hill off school grounds. Don't you touch me. <sighs> Kicked out of work. Kicked out of school. This is the worst vacation ever. Bubbles. Gotcha. Damn zero tolerance. Using a saw for a weapon makes about as much sense as using a gun to cut a tube before. That's how my dad built my treehouse. How he cleaned it, too. Bureaucrats like Moss don't respond to reason, Hank. Let's toilet paper his yard. It's not just Moss, it's the whole dang school board. That's gonna take a lot more TP. I think they keep it under the sink. take turns, I only have three circular saws. Well, what about sanders? I have enough sanders for everyone. By now, you have probably all heard about the suspension of popular shop teacher, Mr. Hill, and his disqualification for substitute teacher of the year. That's so unfair. He lost his job. I, I could not agree more. And in protest, I, Peggy Hill, have decided to take my name off the ballot. Instead, I will run as Mrs. Hank Hill. You might want to use a router instead of that power drill for your grease moat there. Can we do a whole unit on routers next week in class? Well, good idea, Susie, but it's not my class anymore. I could fight for reinstatement, but I gotta get back to the propane game on Monday. Oh. But that shouldn't stop you from pursuing your own dreams of wood, plywood, pressed fiberboard, and if you've got the talent, metal. You see, shop doesn't have to happen in any special place, as long as it's well lit and the outlets are grounded. Because shop is bigger than any classroom or garage or stupid policy that makes tools illegal. It's in our hearts. Okay, let's sweep up. I called the school. They will let you back on school grounds just for the award ceremony. Well, that's terrific. Which I take as a very good indication of my chances. Let's go. Now, before we meet our new assistant swim coach, I'd like to announce the winner of this year's Substitute Teacher of the Year Award. Mrs. Hank Hill. What? Oh, my God. Oh, gosh, thank you. Who would have thought that I would win three years in a row? Honey, my speech. Look, it's Mr. Hill. You hear that, Hank? I fell out of a plane, and just two months later, I have landed on my feet. Mm -hmm. Right shot! Sure. I accept this on 
on behalf of everyone who has ever fallen out of a plane and lived to win her third straight substitute teacher of the year award. Just my luck. The Super Bowl party's in 10 days, and my television goes on the disabled list. Why don't we just get a new TV? Well, I wish that was possible, son, but the terrible truth is that America, the best country in the history of the world, no longer makes television sets. If I let this one fall apart, I let a piece of America die. Well, couldn't we just buy, like, a Japanese one? Bobby, go to your room. Luann, telephone. It's Bugley. Hello, Bugley. What? Uh, of course not. We could go to the outlet stores next week. It's not like they're having a sale or anything. They have everyday low prices. Why are people so mean, Aunt Peggy? It's been 2,000 years since Jesus was born, but we're still acting like cavemen. Oh, honey. Peggy... We're going shopping for the Super Bowl party, not your feminine items. Diet soda? Hey, we have got a situation here. Luann has come down with a bad case of the Y-Me's. Come on, you do something to cheer her up, please. <sighs> hey, uh, Luann, me and Bobby are heading over to the Megalo Mart. You want to go for a ride? Is it okay if I don't feel like talking? Sure, why not? <sighs> It's not just Buckley's everything. The world's going to pieces. I mean, look at any newspaper. Aliens are getting autopsies and devil babies are being born every day. Well, that may be true, Luann, but it's up to each of us to make the world a better place. Take me, for example. I sell a clean, burning, energy-efficient fuel. Oh, well, do you think I could sell propane? <laughs> no. What I'm saying is you've got to find your own calling. Yeah, you're probably This is it. One deflection coil made in the U.S. of A. With this in our set, the only thing beyond our control is the size of the NFC victory. Why don't we just watch the game in Mr. Dotree's house? I like it there. He keeps snacks in his couch cushions. No, Bobby. The Super Bowl party goes Bill, Hank, Dale, Boomhauer. This is Hank year, and I want everything to be perfect. People are still talking about Super Bowl 24. Boomhauer's dip was so thick, our chips were snapping like Joe Theismann's birdie leg. My name is Luann. What's yours? I'm Mr. Cat. Meow, do you do? <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good with those. Mm, I used to play with the puppets all the time with the social worker. Hey, uh, how much for the puppets? You mean it? Well, if it costs 25 cents to make you smile, it's a bargain. <gasps> Dad, an old wig. <sighs> Bobby, take that off. I'm not saying it was a miracle, Reverend Thomason, but I don't usually trip into boxes. I think God has a plan for me, and it involves puppets. Luann, I, I like the idea of a Christian puppet show, but try to see things from my perspective as the spiritual leader of this congregation. We just laid new carpet in the activities room. You put 30 kids in there and lose their attention. <clears throat> Fruit punch all over my new carpet. Oh, please just hear me out. You know how baby Jesus was born in a manger? Okay, baby Jesus was born in a manger. Now, what if, Reverend, what if... The barnyard animals who witnessed the miracle birth of the Son of God had a show of their own. Mm hmm. But Jesus only spent a few days in the manger, and after Luke 2.16, there's no mention of the animals. Are you sure? Trust me, Luann. After he leaves the manger, the Bible pretty much sticks with Jesus. Well, oh, maybe that's good. Because then the animals are kind of like us. They're just waiting for Jesus to come back. And in the meantime... Don't you think they'd have all sorts of crazy adventures?
call it? The Manger Babies. <laughs> We're headlining next week in the activities room. <laughs> manger Babies. <laughs> How do you like that? This is going to be a great show, Luann. I know, but now I've got so much work to do. I have to write a script, build a puppet theater, learn to talk without moving my lips. If you want, you can make a theater out of that old refrigerator box in the garage. I keep it pretty clean. Oh, Uncle Hank. Thank you. Uh, hey, who said that? <laughs> You're doing a great job, Luann. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. But if you have any suggestions... Well, no, 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 for those of you who missed my sermon this morning, I'd like to remind you that spilling anything on a new carpet is a sin. Now, please give a warm welcome to Miss Luann Platt. Once upon a time, almost two thousands of years ago, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born in a manger. And in that manger lived the cutest little animals is their story. After Jesus left, King Herod came, demanding firstborn sons. He cast an evil spell on them, freezing everyone. He slayed the eyeballs, had nativity seen out of yards, their second hands. They came to life and then, amen, I met the manger babies. There's Obadiah the donkey, he says, yeah, Jose is a cat. Meow, meow. An octopus, too. Gurgle, gurgle. But let's not forget a very British bird. Sylvester Featherbottom the third. Charmed, I'm sure, governor. They are the major babies getting in trouble. The major babies spread that message of love. Major babies. <laughs> major babies. to finish nails sticking out a quarter inch. Hank, shush. Today's episode, going to the movies. Who wants to go to the movies? Eeyah, I do, Eeyah. Uh-oh, there are five of us, and I only have four tickets. One of us blokes could sneak in. Watch what? Count me out. Is it sneaking wrong? Eeyah, everybody's doing it. reflects poorly on my craftsmanship. That's all I'm saying. Hank, you're the only one who notices. Here you go. Four tickets. But there are five of you. You were trying to sneak into the movies. You major babies are in a lot of trouble. I'm locking you in a closet. into the movies. The end. <laughs> well, do they get out of the closet? Huh? Sure, I guess. <laughs> How? How do they get out? Um, I'm bored. save you manger babies you will yes uh because i'm the assistant manager of this movie theater i sell popcorn and popcorn accessories and you are fired we're free we're free Yay! thank you 
Thank you, assistant manager. Meow, can we ever repay you? By never forgetting this lesson, sneaking into the movies is wrong. As wrong as spilling juice on a new carpet. Bravo, bravo. You know, Lou Man really shouldn't waste his kind of talent on church. If you want, I can show her tape to my boss at Channel 84. He's always looking for quality children's programming and home videos and things blowing up. Well, Lou Ann really could use a boost right now. But I could not take advantage of our friendship like that, no. Oh, Peggy, honey, this is show business. <laughs> That's what friends do. Done. All right, Bobby, it's safe to plug her back in now. Uh, oh, okay. Another Super Bowl, another can of Scotch Guard. It would be a whole lot simpler if you would just ask Bill not to wipe his hands on the cushion. I got a better idea. You sit here, Boomhauer, Dale, me, and Bobby will sit here. We'll do a zone defense around the chips. But what if Bill tries scrambling around the coffee table? He doesn't have that kind of quickness, Peggy. Not anymore. Uh, Aunt Peggy, could you please pull your car out of the garage? Me and the babies need to rehearse. The TV station could call any minute. They'd be crazy not to. That was the best dang Christian puppet show I have ever seen. Ever. Well, <laughs> I couldn't have done it without your help, Uncle Hank. You saved the day. That's why this time I wrote a part especially for you. Well, that's very nice, Luann, but my appearance was one night only. But you gotta do it. Well, who else am I gonna get to play God? God? Sure. You're great as the hero of my last show, so I figured, why not have you play the greatest hero of them all? <laughs> Tell you what, Luann, uh, just as soon as I finish turning beer into water, I'll meet you in the garage. <laughs> great! <laughs> Uh, she made me God. <laughs> hey, if you're God, I guess that makes me Jesus. <gasps> Bobby, honey, you really shouldn't say that. That is for Luann to decide. Let there be light. And it was good. Get yeah, that's super, Uncle Hank, but can we get back to the script? We're at the part where you meet your arch enemy. Bobby's G.I. Joe? Joe Sixpack. He's a drunk driver who died in a car crash and was sent to hell. And then he borrowed Satan's pickup truck without asking and trashed it, so he got kicked out of hell. And now he roams the earth riding buses and doing evil, like he won't call you on your birthday and he throws beer bottles at your head. What? He crashed a truck? You will feel my wrath. Ha, 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 ha. What you throwing out, Grandpa? The money I poured into the social security system? <laughs> It's for Luann's puppet show. I'm playing God. Well, maybe we ought to ask God who's going to win the Super Bowl. Going to win. The game was pre-taped six months ago in the same Nevada hangar where they faked the moon landing. Yeah, man, it's like that dang old Capricorn One. Man, it's a good movie, but, you know, they ain't going to fake no sand on the ground like that. They do, they don't need all strong. Well, I hope you're ready for that party, Hank, because you only got four more days. Still the Super Bowl. Bill, the Super Bowl is in three days. Oh, damn. God's not angry on that line. He's vengeful. Let's try it again, Luann. It's the TV station. <gasps> Hello? Mm -hmm. Oh, Hank, look how excited she is. You know, just a few days ago, she was talking like, like the world was coming to an end. You're a good man. Man? Ah, we did it, we did it! Channel 84 is putting major babies on the air. It's UHF, Uncle Hank. Ultra high frequency. Oh, Luann, you have thrust your hands into something wonderful this time. We better get back to work. We've got a whole hour to film on Sunday. Well, that doesn't give us much time to get ready. I mean, Sunday is... Sunday? Now, is that before or after the Super Bowl? During. Can you believe it? They put us on against the highest-rated television event of the year because they know we're the one show that can beat it. <sighs> it's a huge responsibility. But I know I could do it. With God on my side. <sighs> <laughs> Uncle Hank, I just realized my octopus only has six legs. 
you might call him a sextopus. Do you think I'll offend sensibilities? Uh, I'm sure you'll figure it out before Super Sunday. I call it Super Sunday because that's when they play the Super Bowl. This Sunday. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm gonna stay home and watch the game. What? But you're in my show. Luann, the Super Bowl is an event. We're having a party. I'm the host. So, you mean, you're not coming? Uh, no, that's not what I said exactly. I said, I'm gonna watch the game, but it could end early due to injuries or, uh, a terrorist attack. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think I want to miss the Super Bowl? No, sir. I've got enough money on this game to cover the bath I took on the Donna Shore Classic. But I will sit through that puppet show because Luann asked me to. Oh, uh, come on. I'll be God some other time, like, uh, Easter. That's during baseball season. Who cares? Hank, Luann believes in you. How can you allow suffering in her world when you have the power to prevent it? Suffering is a part of every religion, Peggy. I mean, look at what the Jews have been through, and you never hear them complaining. Okay, who had three minutes and 40 seconds? Yo. Well, goodbye, Hank. Enjoy the selfish bowl. Turner's legs have to do with auto insurance. Whoa! Oh, hey, wait, hey, 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 wait a minute. It's just in from the Super Bowl. With 48 seconds left in the first quarter, it's 63 degrees and partly cloudy. Now stay tuned for the premiere of Lou Ann Platter's Manger Baby. What are you doing, Hank? If I wanted to spend Super Bowl Sunday staring at my wife, I would have married Fran Tarkenden. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Okay, Luann, you're on in five, four, three, two. Hey, look at her! He broke him free! Yeah, 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 he yeah, goes, go, 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 go. He goes! Come on, man, turn it back. I didn't change it. Oh, damn, we missed it. Well, at least we get to watch him dance in the end zone. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Six-pack, anyone who 
drinks and drives is a real jackass. <laughs> so, Mike, how does it feel doing the rat thing? Pretty good, I guess. Of course, not as good as getting to watch the end of the Super Bowl. Uh, the Super Bowl's always a blowout. This puppet show, it was a real knuckle biter. Oh, my lord, it's Troy Aikman. What are you doing here, son? Uh, uh, sir? Well, it's kind of a funny story. Some guys were snapping towels in the locker room, so I went to Bible study to get some perspective on it. And I saw a flyer for this puppet show. Sort of a little miracle, I, I guess. You know, it was kind of a miracle that brought me here, too. You see, I was watching my TV, and it started flipping channels. Mom, I hope you don't mind, but I borrowed the batteries from your remote control. What remote control? Uh, I, I don't have a remote control. Sure you do, in your purse. The universal remote that can change the channel on any brand of television. I borrowed the batteries from my Game Boy. When? Before the Super Bowl. But if the remote had no batteries... 